Go to the Capitol. CTV's Rachel Aiello is standing by in Ottawa. Rachel, always good to see you. So Pierre Polyev, we also heard from the leader of the Bloc Québécois, no doubt the NDP supporting a lot of these same arguments that only an independent inquiry is going to get the answers we need. What happens now? What, what do you expect we're going to see from, from the government? Well, Todd, the real question that seems to be the focus of opposition parties today is this offer from the Prime Minister for them to have top secret security clearance in order to be able to read this confidential annex that David Johnson included with his report. So in the report he presented yesterday, the public and the media got one copy, but he said that he prepared a secret annex for the Prime Minister and recommended that that be shared with all of the opposition party leaders. Todd, what is in there is some of the intelligence that he was able to look at to make the determination that a public inquiry was not necessary, but also specific information around some of the intelligence leaks. And so he made the case that all the opposition party leaders should be able to have the full set of facts when they're debating this in the House of Commons, and they should be doing so fully informed, given the weight and sensitivity around this issue. But we heard from Blanchet and Polyev both saying they aren't going to be taking that security uh, clearance, calling it essentially a trap and a way to silence them. You know, Rachel, a number of political commentators in the last 24 hours have said the optics here are not good for uh, the prime minister and for the government, that, you know, by not holding a public inquiry, you know, it, it could lead to some people to wonder what's really going on. I mean, putting that aside here, is it possible that uh, Justin Trudeau could, could change his mind and say, you know what, uh, I've decided that, yes, we do need a public inquiry here, an independent one? I've covered Parliament Hill long enough, Todd, mm. to say that anything is possible. <laughs> but the questions we've been putting to the Prime Minister on this uh, prior to him appointing David Johnson and since the report yesterday, he seems very confident in resisting a public inquiry. Now, let's see how the political pressure continues, if there is more revelations. Obviously, these things are all very subject to change. But at this point, Todd, he's very clear that uh, he agrees with David Johnson's assessment that a public inquiry is not going to get Canadians any more answers or insight into who knew what and when because the core elements that would answer those questions are part of secret documents. Now there is kind of this call and suggestions that perhaps some of this could be declassified to try to instill Canadians' confidence if they could see some of this documentation themselves rather than taking David Johnson's word for it, obviously because of the uh, heated rhetoric and political, you know, kind of questions around his appointment, there is some suggestions that he may not be the best messenger for this, assure me, I've taken a look under the hood and everything is fine. Uh, we'll see how that progresses. But at this point, the next kind of phase is going to be David Johnson doing these public hearings. He's also going to be doing some additional work behind the scenes on some of the other bigger questions that his report yesterday pointed out around confidential information, around some of the gaps in Canadian security laws. The things around intelligence is not evidence, things like that. But certainly from what we've heard from the opposition parties, when they come back to Ottawa next week, uh, the Prime Minister is going to be continue to get questioned about this. Rachel Aiello in Ottawa. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks.